Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how we can create a digital clock using React. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, let's get started everybody. If you would like a background image for your app, place that image within your assets folder. Here's the image that I'm going to use. I found it online. We will create a digital clock component within our source folder. Digital clock dot JSX. We will need to import two hooks. Import from React, use object destructuring to get the use state hook as well as the use effect hook from its location of React. We're going to create a function based component of digital clock, no parameters, then be sure to export it at the end. Export default default, <laughs> default digital clock. We do need to return something. For the time being, we are going to return a fragment just so that everything runs. Back within our app component, we need to import our digital clock component from its location dot forward slash digital clock dot JSX. We will include one digital clock component. Within our digital clock component, we'll create the following HTML. We will create a div element to contain everything. This outer div element is going to have a class name of clock container. Within this div element, we will create a nested div element. This div element will have a class name of clock. We have a clock within a clock container. Within this inner div element, we will create a span element to display a time. Until we get the time working, let's display a bunch of zeros for the hours, minutes, and seconds. And here's our time, but it's a little small. I'm zoomed in currently. Okay, let's go to our CSS style sheet. We will select the following, the body of our document, our clock container class, and our class of clock. If you would like to add a background image, here's what you can do. Within the body of your document, we will set the background image property to be, we will use the URL function. Within this function, we will pass in a relative or absolute file path to your image from the index file. We'll have to access the assets folder. Assets, the name of the image. My image is named background, and this is a JPEG. Okay, here's my image, but it's a little big. Then we will take our background position property, set it to be center, to center the image. Now it does repeat. We'll set the background repeat property to be no repeat. We'll set the background size to cover, to cover this development, the outer development. Background size cover. Now we'll take the background attachment property, set it to be fixed. As we adjust the size of the window, the image is going to adjust accordingly and maintain its aspect ratio. We do have a little bit of margin around the body of our document. I'm going to remove that. Margin zero. Next, we have to work on the clock itself. It's a little small. Within the clock class, I will set a color of white. I'll increase the font size because we can barely see it to 6 REM. That should be a decent size and a font weight of bold. Pick a font family. I will pick monospace. I think that'll look good for a clock. I will also add a text shadow effect with a horizontal and vertical offset of three pixels each and a blur of five pixels. Pick a color. I'll pick black, but I'll lower the alpha to 75% or so. 
then I will center align my text. Text align center. Our clock is centered horizontally, but not vertically within the window. If you would like the clock in the exact middle of the window, here are some following optional CSS properties you can add. These are optional. We'll use Flexbox, display flex to display all the elements. Justify content center. To center this clock vertically within the middle of our window, we have to set the maximum height of the body to be 100% of the viewport height. We'll add this following property. Set the minimum height of the body to be 100 VH for the viewport height. 100% of the viewport height. Then use the align items property, set it to be center to vertically align it. And I think that looks pretty good. Now we'll select our clock container. For the background of the clock container, I would like it so it looks like we're looking through glass. Here's how to do that. We will use the backdrop filter property, use a function of blur. Pass in a number in an amount of pixels. The greater the number, the greater the blur. Here's 5 pixels. Here's 50. What's 500 look like? Okay, let's go with 5 pixels. We have a little bit of a blur effect. If you would like the clock container to take up 100% of the viewport width, you can add the following property. Set the width of the clock container to be 100 VW. For viewport width. So now the clock container takes up 100% of the width of the window. Then I'll add a little bit of padding to the top and bottom, but not the sides. Padding 10 pixels for the top and bottom, 0 for the sides. We should get a little bit of padding on the top and bottom. I like that. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, we can save everything. We no longer need our CSS style sheet. And now we will be working within the digital clock component. We'll be using the useState hook. We will create a state variable of time, const time, and a setter for time named setTime equals the useState hook. For the initial state of the useState hook, we will pass in a new date object, whatever the current date and time currently is. That's what the initial state of time is going to be. It will be an object. We will also use the use effect hook. We can perform some code during each render or when we mount or anytime some sort of value updates. When this component mounts, we'll start an interval to move the clock forward. There's two parameters within use effect, a function to do something and an array of dependencies. For our function, we'll use an arrow function parameters, arrow, do this. And for our dependencies, based on the last video, we're just going to set an empty array. I would like to start a timer only when we mount the component. We don't need to start a new timer every time the component renders. What would we like to do once when our component mounts? We will create a constant of interval ID equals set interval with set interval, we can pass in a callback and a time in milliseconds to repeat this callback. Let's do some code every 1000 milliseconds, meaning every one second. Let's do the following. We'll write an arrow function to do this. Every 1000 milliseconds, we will update the state of time using our setter of set time. We will pass in a new date object. And that's all we need. So after every second, we will update the state of time with the new current date and time. Now, if we do unmount this component, it would be good practice if we were to clear our timer. If we don't, it may lead to unexpected behavior. We will add a cleanup function. When this component unmounts, we will return the following. Do this function. We will call the function to clear interval and pass in that interval ID to stop this interval. If we ever unmount our digital clock, we don't want it to continue running. 
we want to free up any resources. If we don't, that may lead to unexpected behavior. So that is all we need with use effect. When we mount, and that's it, create an interval that updates once every second. When we unmount the component, clear that interval, and that's it. Now we will also need a function to format time. Function format time. There are no parameters. We need to get the hours, minutes, and seconds of our time, the state variable of time. That's pretty simple though. We will declare using let, let hours equals our time state variable. Use the method of get hours. Let's do this with minutes. Let minutes, actually let's declare this as const. Const minutes time dot get minutes and seconds const seconds equals time dot get seconds we will also find what the meridian is is it am or pm we'll have to write the following const meridian equals let's examine our hours is our hours greater than or equal to 12 our time in hours is going to be in military time. I believe that's 0 through 23 technically. If hours is greater than or equal to 12, ternary operator. If this is true, meridian will be PM. Otherwise, meridian will be AM. With hours, we're going to reassign it. Let's say that it is 1 PM. So hours will be 13, one hour after 12. If I don't want to display my time in military time, I'm going to reassign hours. We'll take hours, modulus 12. Modulus gives you the remainder of any division. For example, if hours is 13, 13 modulus 12 has a remainder of one. So that's how you can convert from military time. Use modulus 12. What if hours is 12? 12 modulus 12 is zero. If it's 12 o'clock, we don't want to display zero. We can add the following. Use the OR logical operator. OR return 12. If this equation is zero, that is equivalent to false. So using the OR logical operator, hours would instead equal 12. Then within format time, we're going to return one long template string. We will display a placeholder with hours colon, a placeholder, with minutes, colon, a placeholder, with seconds, space, placeholder, our meridian. Then within our span element, we will display, embed some JavaScript, call the format time function. Here's the current time for me. It is 7.52 at night, PM, and the time is updating. Now we have a problem. If one of our units of time is a single digit, we don't have any leading zeros. So let's fix that. We will declare a function, function pad zero. There's one parameter. We have to pass in a number. With hours, minutes, and seconds, we will pass each of these units of time to the pad zero function. So we will enclose each of these within the pad zero function, then return a result. So let's pad our hours with zero, pad our minutes with zero, and pad seconds with zero. Okay, we have undefined, undefined, undefined. That's okay. So within pad zero, we have to return something. We need to check to see if our number is a single digit. We can do that with checking to see if number is less than 10. If it is, it's a single digit. We'll use the ternary operator. Is our number a single digit? Is it less than 10? If that's true, we're going to return a string of zero. If not, we don't have to do anything. We'll return an empty string. We will take all of this and close it within a set of parentheses. Return either zero or an empty string plus the original number. For example, if our number was one, 
one is less than 10, that is true, we'll return a string of zero, then use string concatenation and add our original number of one. So we would return zero, one. If our number was 12, well, this condition is false. We would return an empty string plus the original number of 12, which would give me a string of 12. So here's the result. We have each unit of time with the leading zero, if it needs it. And we have successfully created a digital clock component. And the cool thing about doing this in React is that we can reuse this component whenever we want. We can create one digital clock component, or another, or another, or another. And let me refresh these to synchronize them. These are all individual components running their own code. All right, everybody, so that is how to create a digital clock component using React.